we're gonna make a new document. Okay, so let's see here. <clears throat> we're gonna go to web. We got some presets here, 1920 by 1080. Now, if you wanna actually have a transparent background and be able to export it transparent, you need to be able to hit this transparent background little key right here, or it's gonna add a white background that you can't remove. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit create, 1920 by 1080. Now we have our cool transparent background. I wanna just show you a couple things. So one of the first and most important parts here is understanding one, the transparent background, but two, understanding the interface itself and the interface of the program. So over here is your toolbar. These toolbars are very, very important for you to be able to understand going through these. And you can see here, there's these little clips kind of like in Photoshop. So step one is getting your canvas set up. Step two is actually understanding this program. So inside of this program is you have your contextual toolbar here. As I think that what they call that and then here's your other actual toolbar so there's two toolbars uh, in here that are really really neat and the other thing that you need to know is there's actually different kinds of workspaces but they call them personas in affinity so this is the designer persona you have your pixel persona so when you're creating something with pixels and then you have this last persona which is your export persona this is where you're going to save and edit and basically render out or export your files. So these are the different workspaces. If you work in here, you're gonna be working in vector primarily, which is great because you can scale them to any size and you'll have no problems in there. So just looking at a few of these tools, you can see here you can click in the bottom corner of them and you hold down and you'll see there's some different options in there for you. So if I can grab a little squiggly line, I can grab this, right? Now all of a sudden you can see here, here's that curve. Now if I go into here, this is all editable. So I can click one of these little nodes let me see here, I'm click and drag. And I can actually move one of these, probably with this guy here, and move them. So it's really neat what it allows you to do. I can create all kinds of cool stuff because it's in vector. Vector is really the primary way that you're gonna wanna design anyway. Now you can see here, this has got the stroke that's outlined, and then you also have your panels here. So I wanna show you, there's your history panel, your navigator panel, you have your colors, your swatches, your strokes, you have your brushes, you have your appearance, which is really neat. So if you wanted to change this for some reason and you wanted to have a fill color right here, you can just go in here and switch this to blue and now all of a sudden you got a fill color. So there's a lot, a lot to do inside of Affinity Designer. The third thing I wanted to show you that's really, really important is the pre-made shape. So obviously you have your squares, right? If I just click and drag, I can make whatever kind of square, rectangle, whatever I want. If I hold shift, it's gonna constrain that and give me a perfect square. Same thing on the circle, if I hold down the circle and I hold down shift, it's gonna make my circle perfect. But then if I let go, I can make an oval, I can make an ellipse, I can make a thin little line, it lets me do whatever I want. And then I have all these custom shapes. So I want you to be able to understand that. And then being able to uh, also navigate through the document itself. So let me just show you something here. So if I scroll up, you can see here there's different layers, right? And so being able to understand your document and understand how to navigate through your document, if you hold the space bar, in fact, I'm gonna hit V real quick and it's gonna go back to my main cursor tool on my keyboard Now I hold the space bar. Now I can click and drag on my document and navigate all the way around. If I wanted to hit Command minus on my keyboard, I can make this thing smaller. I hit Command plus and I can make it bigger. If I hit Command or Control, for some of you guys, it's control if you're on a PC, it's command if you're on a Mac. I can hit the O, or the, I'm sorry, the number zero, and it's gonna fill that whole space in. So this is navigating throughout the document, which is really nice. And I wanted to go through these things so you can really understand how to get around um, this program as simple as and easy as it is. I wanna just kinda speed uh, cut, I wanna be able to just kinda cut uh, your time down on how much you need to learn about this program. Okay, so the number fifth thing that I have for you is actually working with your different colors. So let's just pick a document here or image here. And now as I showed you inside of the color palette, I can go over here and I can actually specifically click on a specific color in here. I can do a swatch. I can pull a swatch from somewhere so I can click on this. And you can see here, I can pull this in here, blue, right? I'm gonna open up, there you go. So now I can adjust those colors there. And you can see I have my little navigator pa panel there. If I wanna adjust the stroke, I can do that, just adjust the width on it. I can go even bigger. Now that stroke happens to be black, just like that. So if I wanna click and change that stroke, all I gotta do is go in here and switch it that way. Now with your layers themselves, so you have your three layers, to turn a layer off, you just unclick there, turns it off. Do that with any of these, right? Turn that off. Now, if I move this layer above here, right? 
you can see it's on top of this crazy swiggly line I bought, I, I got. Now if I click this one, I drag this on top, that's in the center. Now let's just say I wanna make this on top. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag it up. Boom, that's gonna be on top and I wanna click and drag this one down and it's gonna be below it. So let's just say I wanna do something like this. I wanna take this, click up in here. And if I don't wanna select any layers, all I do is hit the escape and now I'm not selected on any of them. So this is just something just playing around. There's no real artwork going on here, but I wanted to show you how to use your layers properly. And then if you right click, you even have some other options here on the layers, Ex exclude, lock, hide, mask. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Rasterize, there's a whole gamut of options. But today, just for the sake of time, we don't have time to go into all those other options. I just wanna show you the basics. Now the next one, is combining shapes. Now this is interesting. So in order for you to combine some shapes, there's two ways to go about doing that. So I'm gonna click this shape, I'm gonna hold down shift, I'm gonna click this shape, and now if I just click add right here, I mean, it's gonna combine those two shapes together and it's gonna convert that top one into the same color. Hit command or control Z, it's gonna undo that. Now if I do the same thing, but I hit alter option, it's actually gonna create a compound shape. So I can actually go in here later and edit this and move this thing around. Turn the, just this piece off, turn that piece on. So this is a really neat option and a function that you should be able to do as well. Something I want you guys to be able to mess around with and practice. It's really important that you get some practice on this program, just having some fun. Now, let me just turn these layers off real quick and clear off my clipboard or clear off my artboard. And now we're gonna mess with some text. So let's go ahead and add some text here. I'm gonna click and drag, there we go. I'm gonna type in Affinity, there you go, that's a nice word there. And then we can actually go in here and change the fonts. I can pick one of my fonts right there, look at that, isn't that cool? I can add strokes to it if I want to. There's a lot of different things here. There's no stroke on it now, but if I want to add a stroke, all I gotta do is just say I wanna add a bright red, right? And I go into my stroke palette here, bring that up a little thicker, and I can adjust whether I want it aligned on the inside, on the outside, it looks pretty cool on the outside on the center, so it lets you choose where you want to align that as well as the cap. And there's all kinds of sections, settings underneath that, but for today, I just want to try to keep it as simple as possible. We're gonna go ahead and turn that back off. And then if I want to adjust my kerning, I can hit Alter Option and click left to the right. And you know, kerning is really, really important. And this is how you would mess with your text. You can actually size your text just in here by going up and down, oops, up in here. So you can make it bigger, or smaller, go back up this way. I can scale it this way, you can click and drag, I can bring it up and down. So however you wanna make your text look cool, you can do that. There's a lot of different functions and features and body headings, you can label things, left align, right align, you can add some styles, emphasize some stuff, you can make uh, just all kinds of cool settings within here. And so I'm just gonna click this, put this right kind of towards the center there, there you go. And so the next thing I wanna do, and this is number eight, is I actually want to draw some custom objects. So we're gonna draw some custom objects kind of like I did in the beginning, but I'm gonna use the pen tool. So we're gonna draw something custom. So I wanna say affinity, I wanna make a cool A. So we're gonna go ahead and hit here. In fact, let me hit Command Z. If you hold down Shift, you can see it's drawing a straight line. So I can bring this out and do the same thing here. If I hold down Shift, I haven't let go of Shift yet. It's gonna try to draw a straight line again, but I wanna make sure that this aligns with the other side. This goes out a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. So now I'm gonna go in here and bring this up. It's probably around here. Boom. And so if I want to, if I wanna make an adjustment to this, I can click this and I can just bring this up. There we go, that looks like a pretty straight line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over here on the right, and then I wanna right click and I wanna duplicate this. I'm pretty sure it's gonna let me duplicate it. Let's see here, transform group copy. Okay, now you're gonna hit edit. You're gonna hit paste. Okay, so now I have two of these. Now what I need to do is transform. There we go, transform. I'm gonna flip horizontally. Boom, there we go. Remember what I talked about earlier about creating a custom object? So now I can grab this, grab this, and grab this. I'm gonna bring this up here. Okay, and I wanna align these top and bottom. So I'm gonna grab this and this, and there's an align tool. So I'm gonna align these at the top. I'm gonna align these like this. And I wanna make sure, whoops, see, I can totally align these. Now I'm gonna go in one pixel to the left, there we go. Now these should be able to be combined. I'm gonna click and drag this one, hold shift and click and grab, blah, grab that one. Now I wanna combine these. Remember, hold alt or option down and hit add, and now they're one solid object. So this is a custom object 
that you can create for your designs. If you want to go back and edit it, you can just click inside the little triangle, edit each one. What I wanted to do real quick was just kind of click in here. There you go. Oh, because I have them compounded. So if you want to uncompound them, you can, uh, but I have them compounded right now. And then the last thing is being able to save and export. So like I showed you before, you go over here to your export persona, right? And you're gonna, where you're gonna export your stuff. And we're gonna go ahead and take this document here. And let's see here. So we're gonna have to pick either the selection. So here we go, PNG. I wanna go with JPEG, best quality. And there we go. I'm gonna click all these. Where's my text? There we go. I can create a slice. So now we go file, save as, or save it as a Photoshop file, that's cool. Or you can go file, export, you pick PNG, I can pick JPEG, all, these are all the different file types that allows you to do, even Photoshop. So this is pretty compatible. I can do a JPEG high quality, you hit export, boom, you save it. So affinity, there we go. I'm gonna save this inside of my desktop, right there, boom, hit save. Now it's gonna save it with a white background because I didn't save, I have the transparent background in here, but I didn't save it as a PNG. So if I want a PNG, I can go back over to PNG, do the same thing, export, and even pull this open, name it the same thing, Infinity PNG, hit export. And now if you look, I have both of these files inside here, one with a transparent background and one without. There you go. So those are the 10 things that you need to know. Wanted to run those through by you real quick so it would help you out. All right guys, so I just installed Affinity Designer. This was my first time ever using Affinity and I wanted to run through those 10 things real fast for you guys. I hope this was super helpful if you haven't used Affinity before. I actually highly recommend it. It's a really great price, it's a great tool. Uh, it has a lot of neat features. It almost is like combining Photoshop and Illustrator together. Um, because there's just so much that you can do with blendings and drop shadows and all kinds of cool stuff that this allows you to do. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you. God bless. And as always, keep looking up.